Hi, it's Stephanie. Hi, it's Emily. And today we're continuing with our horoscope series. We're going to talk about cancer today. Yay! So if you're a cancer, this video is for you. Do um, you want to go into the characteristics? Sure. So cancer, uh, most people who are born of cancer uh, are usually born around the time of late June to late July. Not necessarily the latest, as in like J July, like around like July 22nd or so. And they're mostly very family oriented. They're quite sensitive creatures. They creatures. They um. They're, they're very, not humans. Okay, they're creatures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're defined by the symbol of the crab, and just given the overall nature of how like crabs generally tend to walk uh, lopsided versus mm -hmm. straightforward, I think in general, and it's also that you are a water sign, it kind of helps to sort of embody like the principles as well as the characteristics of what it means to be a Cancer. So, like I mentioned before, you're very family oriented. You're relatively sensitive in the sense that other people may not or understand you, just given the nature of like just how you think and half the time you are kind of interesting from my point of view from the mm -hmm. people I've met because when sober <laughs> when sober <laughs> you are very affable you're very energetic you want everyone to be so happy and the moment that like you kind of get like I guess when drunk <laughs> suddenly it was like all that energy that was balled out up suddenly just all comes out. So it's like, in general, I really do like being around Cancer people, but uh, I guess as I am a Capricorn, it can get a little overwhelming, the sort of responsibility that I've been given once my Cancer friends come out and say, you're my friend, therefore you need to care about my feelings. So I guess like it's kind of a about, uh, give and take with Cancer, mm -hmm. while they're very like friendly and they're extremely um, warm-hearted, they can also be a little overbearing. Yeah, I, I, that's at least my assessment with, of them, as well as like some of the more common characteristics of what it means to be a Cancer. Moving on with my pick, um, I feel like the past few picks I have been picking kind of like s secondary characters, not mm. like the main character, um, just because I, I can't really find any books that I've read recently um, that really embodies like the each like Gemini's characteristics or the Cancer's characteristics as a main character. But for a secondary character, it's like much easier. Or like it's not. I can actually find a book. So my pick for Cancer is Winter Song by S. J. Jones. Oh, I've heard the story. Yeah. So basically, it follows the story of a girl called Liesel. Liesel. Yeah, I think that's her name. Liesel, who basically, you know, they're, I think I believe they're set in like a few hundred years ago in Germany where she is, um, she loves to write, like compose music, but because she's a female and everything, they, she was kind of frowned upon in her family. Her dad's kind of like, oh no, you should be more focused on like womanly tasks and kind of um, had her brother who was a very um, skilled pianist, I believe. Uh, actually take up the musical talent. So even though half the time, it was he was either pianist or violinist, I forget, but regardless, half the time it was her brother playing and then he'd be playing her songs that she composed. Um, so during this time, it's a very superstitious period, so there was this goblin king that they know about um, who is basically the embodiment, I think, of cancer. He's like very lonely, he always feels like he's neglected even though he has a kingdom. But no one was really his subjects, really. Um, it was more like he went into his role without realizing what he was up for. And then, so he's like trying to find a bride and he brought like Liesel and everything. So I feel like he was very charismatic to her because he was always trying to like, you know, seduce her. But at the same time, he's very manipulative because end of the day, the purpose of him seducing her is because he needs a bride. Mm. So I feel like this story is like, the Goblin King is definitely the reason why I picked this book. Um, and then you see like their interactions, the relationships that they develop, and um, what she does with her musical talents, um, etc. So I thought this would be an interesting pick mainly because I think um, the Goblin King really identifies as a Cancer. Um, he has a whole, he, he's very family oriented. I mean, clearly he's trying to find a wife here. So, <laughs> kind of family trying oriented. Trying to find a mate. Kind of trying to find a mate. mate. Yeah, forever mate. Um, trying to be, and he has, and he's very, uh, he's also very sensitive as well because 
Um, you see his, you get to read more about his background and like how he became the Goblin King. So you see why he's very sensitive to humans um, and their, you know, everyday lives and whatnot. So that was an interesting pick. Yeah. And apparently, I just looked it up. Apparently, it's a book two. Okay. But it's not coming out until like next year. So I don't know if I'll pick it up, but we'll see. <laughs> so what I've kind of noticed with our dynamic is that you always tend to focus a lot on, on the characters. Like the yeah, and the characters, yeah. as well as the, I guess, the more negative attributes. What do you mean? It's <laughs> like, you say that he's, he's, he's really lonely, like, it's kind of like the yin-yang again. It's like, you're, you're always, like, on the, the yang side of, like, things. No, like, the I was, side I was, things. no, I look at the whole, this one, I look at the whole picture. I was like, because he's family-oriented, he's charismatic, yet he's manipulative, and he is, he, like, you know, lonely but like whatever yeah okay i guess it's just the way you talked about the character for oh. some reason i started catching like he's lonely and then yeah because that's one of the characteristics that like, you mentioned to me you're like oh they're um, usually sensitive and charismatic but they're also a little manipulative and um you should, you should have led with those because <laughs> all i heard was like most of what no, i heard that's why was I said like he's family so he's looking mm -hmm. for a mate for life hello yeah and, so. I, and i understand like the overall need for um you know sort of like a more dynamic character for any yeah. story but it was it was just funny like maybe you don't agree with my assessment of course but that, that was the sort of appeal that i was getting <laughs> i was like um so my selection for cancer is this book, and we actually got this book via Bacon, and uh, it is The Recarnation Blues by Michael Poore. And the reason why I chose this book is that it's it's very interesting, and I felt like it was very um, embodiment. It embodied a lot of what I thought cancer was. Uh, I felt like the main character himself was um, a very love oriented man like he died like the overall synopsis of the story is that this guy dies thousands and thousands of times lives all these different uh life uh life stories mm -hmm. uh regardless if it's horrifically awful like there are certain like events like he gets locked up in jail um mm -hmm. in this futuristic world where um like the author doesn't like doesn't mesh things like there's there's certain like abuse that happens in that particular lifetime versus when he cho he ends up being reincarnated again as like a noble king or like a really famous executive and mm -hmm. but each of these lifetimes are sort of evaluated in this um in the in this present in this premise where he gets sent back to the afterlife let's just okay. call it that and he meets death who is his ultimate lover like mm -hmm. he wants to be with death all the time, so it kind of propels the story a little bit more uh, forward because of the fact that in the beginning they didn't really know each other, but every time he dies, he ends up falling more and more in love with death, and then he's trying to find his way to be with her while like not being actually dead. So <laughs> um, the story itself is really really engaging. I love this book, um, but yeah, in general, I felt like it really did kind of go into how far cancers really would go for the sake of love and being able to be with someone and the fact and that's kind of romantic from my point of view so mm -hmm. I felt like in general I picked a main character I felt like he really did come off as that sort of sensitive yet very um charismatic type because mm -hmm. the book itself is really funny he gets into a lot of the jokes mm -hmm. um despite of all the dire moments that he's lived and yeah in general i thought this was a really good pick and i do encourage anyone who is a cancer or otherwise to pick up this book for it okay so yeah i mean that concludes our picks for cancer i picked winter song and she picked reincarnation blues. blues i think they're both very different mine is like the mat like the ya fantasy magic side and then yours is more of a uh, is this still, it's not YA, is it? No, it's not YA, uh, just given the context of it, as well as the fact that the character isn't really, like, a teenager. Okay. So, I'd say that it's more, like, adult fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, so it's two vastly different books, but we think that these both of these books will be well-suited for cancers. So, yeah, let us know in the comments below if you think these books are up your alley, if you're a cancer, or otherwise, um, mm -hmm. and if you agree with us or not. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe and like our video. <laughs> don't say that so lightly. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, subscribe. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, 
and so, yeah, definitely if you like the, uh, like what we've said or want to continue to follow us, don't forget to subscribe. And if you liked this video, like it, and we'll see you next time then. All right, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.